Professor Mithuli N. Cube, once a respected economist, saw his reputation take a hit after joining ZANU-PF. NCUBE's initial efforts to introduce reforms were met with resistance from within ZANU-PF. The old guard, accustomed to patronage and self-enrichment, had little appetite for his austerity measures. His attempts to rein in government spending and tackle corruption were seen as a threat to their vested interests. The introduction of the gold-backed currency, a flagship policy of NCUBE, was meant to stabilize the economy and restore confidence in the Zimbabwean dollar. However, the initiative has been plagued by mismanagement and a lack of transparency. The gold-backed currency, touted as a solution to Zimbabwe's economic woes, has instead become a symbol of the government's economic mismanagement. Despite rising global gold prices, the Zimbabwean dollar continues to plummet, leaving citizens grappling with soaring inflation and a depreciating currency. The government's failure to address corruption and lack of transparency within the gold mining sector has undermined confidence in the gold-backed currency. Rampant smuggling and illicit financial flows deprive the country of much-needed revenue, further weakening the currency. Instead of addressing these structural issues, the government has resorted to blaming external factors, such as sanctions, for the economic meltdown. Without genuine reforms and a commitment to good governance, the Zimbabwean economy will continue to falter. The 2017 coup that ousted Robert Mugabe raised hopes for a new era in Zimbabwe, one marked by democracy, economic prosperity, and the rule of law. However, these hopes have been dashed by the current administration's failure to deliver on its promises of reform. Instead of ushering in a new era, the country remains mired in political instability, economic stagnation, and social discontent. ZANU-PF under Emerson Menangagwa has shown little appetite for genuine political reform. Opposition parties continue to face intimidation and harassment, while the media operates under strict censorship. The space for dissent has shrunk, and human rights abuses continue with impunity. The government's authoritarian tendencies have alienated many who had hoped for a genuine transition to democracy. The ZANU-PF government has consistently resorted to propaganda and misinformation to deflect blame for the country's woes and maintain its grip on power. State-controlled media outlets churn out a steady stream of pro-government narratives while independent voices are silenced through intimidation and censorship. This manipulation of information has eroded public trust and created a climate of fear and suspicion. The awarding of lucrative contracts to cronies, the looting of state resources, and the lack of accountability at the highest levels of government tell a different story. The people of Zimbabwe are not fooled by the smoke and mirrors of propaganda. The government's reliance on propaganda has backfired further, alienating citizens who are acutely aware of the realities on the ground. Rebuilding this trust will require a fundamental shift in the government's approach, one based on transparency, accountability, and a genuine commitment to serving the interests of the people. Zimbabwe stands at a crossroads, facing a confluence of challenges that threaten to derail its fragile recovery. The country's political, economic, and social fabric is stretched thin, and the path forward remains fraught with uncertainty. The choices made by its leaders in the coming months and years will determine whether Zimbabwe can break free from its troubled past or remain trapped in a cycle of decline. Targeted assistance, aimed at strengthening democratic institutions, promoting good governance, and empowering civil society, will be crucial. A vibrant civil society, a free and independent media, and a robust opposition are essential for holding the government accountable and ensuring that it serves the interests of all citizens. The international community can play a supportive role, but it is the people of Zimbabwe who must lead the way. A new generation of Zimbabweans, unburdened by the past, is emerging, eager to build a better future for their country.